this is just more practicing with unit two um, on writing equations, determining them from tables and graphs. Okay, on um, numbers one through three, we're supposed to determine if the data is linear or nonlinear. And if it's linear, then find the function, find the coefficient, the constant, and then determine if it's proportional. If it's not linear, you can't answer any of those. Okay, so first off, it says is to figure out if it's linear. The first thing that we're able to do in our table right here is we will go and uh, we're going to make our ordered pairs. We're going to draw our table and let's find our ordered pairs. First off, I've got this point right here, which is negative 4 and negative 1. So I'm going to put in my table negative 4, negative 1. The next one right here is 0, negative 3. So I'm going to put in there 0, negative 3. This one is 4, negative 5. So I have 4 and negative 5. Let me continue my lines down here. The next one right here is 10, negative 8. Now to figure out, the first thing is to figure out if it's linear. If it's linear, then delta y over delta x has to be the same. So I'm going to go up here and I've got delta y. The change in y is minus 2, minus 2. Now this one is minus 3. Okay, but you can't go off of just that what's in the red. I have to do delta x. The change in x right here is plus 4 plus 4 plus 6. So now let's go and do delta y over delta x. Negative 2 over 4 is negative 1 half. Negative 3 over 6, you reduce it, it's negative 1 half. All right, so yes, it is linear because they're the same. The next thing it wanted us to find was the equation. Whoops, so letter B is to find the equation. So let's see, I like using 0 because I take negative 1 half times 0. You multiply these two together, that always gives you 0. What do you have to do to 0 to get to negative 3? Subtract 3. So my equation becomes y equals negative 1 half x minus 3. The coefficient is the number with the x. It is negative one half. It is not negative one half x. X is the variable. Constant. The constant is minus three. Now the last question we needed to answer is if it was proportional. Remember proportional means does it cross through zero, zero. Okay, well there's zero, zero. That line is down here, so no, it does not. Next one. Pause the video and see if you can find the answers to is it linear, what's the equation, and if it's proportional. Okay, so the first step for is it linear. I'm going to find delta y. The change in y is plus 1, plus 2, plus 1. Delta x, the change in x plus 4, plus 2, plus 4. Now let's go over here and I've got delta y divided by delta x. 1 over 4, okay, and the other one is 2 over 2. Wait a minute. Let's make sure we did this right. Yeah, that's 2 and that's 2. See, this is 1. These are not the same, so it is not linear. And you cannot, you cannot find the equation, and it cannot be pr proportional. So, not proportional. Okay, well, let's try the next one. There's the next one. Try and find out if it's linear, the equation, delta y over delta x, and if it's proportional. Step one, delta y. The change in y right here is plus 6, plus 12, and what is that? Plus 6. 
delta x, you have to find those because you have to divide the two amounts. Plus 2, plus 4, plus 3. Let me make sure I did this right. Plus 2, plus 4, and plus 3. Yep. This right here is plus 6, plus 12. Oh, I messed up this right here. Look, it's not plus 6, it, six is it? It's plus 9. All right. Delta Y over delta X. 6 over 2 is 3. 12 over 4 is 3. 9 over 3 is 3. All of these are the same. So that means, yes, it is linear. It, linear, remember, means to make a line. So now we can go find the equation. So I'm going to use, you don't have to use the first one up there. I'm going to use the positive ones. I've got 3 times 2. Well, 3 times 2 equals 6. Well, that's all I need right there. So my equation is y equals 3x. The coefficient is 3. The constant is 0. Since the constant is 0, Yes, it is proportional. Pro let's try and spell that right. Let's see. Let's try again. And it is proportional because it goes through 0, 0. Because the constant is 0. Next one. Okay, first thing it says, maybe you can pause it and see if you can draw these and then come back and see if, yours, if, if it makes sense with whatever I do. It says, draw an example of a nonlinear graph. Okay, so nonlinear. Let's see. Um, maybe I'll just do this. I'll make this kind of curve. Well, if it's not linear, it cannot be proportional. Um, be, and it's so, can the graph tree be proportional? No. It has to be linear first. Now it says to draw a graph that is linear and proportional. So, to be proportional, I'm going to start at 0, 0. And to be linear, it's going to be a straight line. That doesn't have to be, it'll be going up, but it doesn't have to be this. I could have drawn another example. Maybe I did my linear line and it went up like this. That's fine too, as long as it makes a straight line. So linear, remember, means straight line. Proportional. <laughs> means it goes through. Zero, zero. Here's the next one. Ben has at most twenty dollars to spend on after school snacks, and on average each snack costs a dollar fifty. What is the domain of his of this function situation? Functional, I guess. Um, first off, let's look at this. It says that Ben starts off with twenty dollars and he spends money so I've got to subtract off how much he spends he spends a dollar fifty for each snack so I've got to have a dollar fifty times X remember X is the number of snacks okay and I would set it equal to Y that's how you'd write the equation now let's think about this though if you have a dollar fifty and you only have twenty dollars to spend. Let's let's take a dollar fifty and divide it into twenty. Okay, so x equals. So let me go over here. I'm going to take twenty divided by a dollar fifty. I get thirteen point. Oh, where would it go? Thirteen point three 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 three. So thirteen point three three repeating. Well, if you take a dollar fifty times fourteen. This is going to be over twenty dollars. So I'm going to have. Let's see. Let me show you. A dollar fifty times fourteen 
gives me $21. And the most that his parents give him is 20 So he can't, he cannot get 14 He has to get 13 Well, on the snacks, so on my domain, let's see here. My domain, first off, i got to start at zero because you could, you could get no snacks after, Ben could get no snacks after school and keep his money. Maybe he wants to go to the movies later on. Or he can just buy one snack, two, three, four, on up, the most amount he can get. Whoops, it's not 20. What did we say right here? It was 13. The, the most amount of snacks he can get is 13 because if he gets 14, he doesn't have enough money because his mom's too stingy and won't give him an extra dollar. Here's the next one. Megan is using algebra tiles to solve the equation. Draw the setup of this equation using tiles and show the first step with tiles. Well, pause the video and come back and see if you did it correctly. You would have 4x. Remember, the longer tiles are the x's. So 4x and then minus 2 equals negative 6. I'm trying to make squares here. Okay, so there's the original problem. This is 4x minus 2 equals negative 6. Well, when we're solving this, the first thing we would do is we would add 2 to each side. So that's what it wants us to draw. So I would add true 2 to each side because what you do to one side, you must do to the other. Now, by doing this, a positive and a negative take each, uh, cross each other out. That's a zero pair. Positive takes away a negative. Positive takes away a negative. So I have... 1, 2, 3, 4 x's equals 4 negative units. And that would be your first step. And then you could finish from there. Next. I always kind of go through to see how much farther we have here. Jill's joined an online music club that charges a monthly fee of $5. Okay, so the monthly fee of five dollars. There's your constant. Oh, that's that's not a constant. What am I thinking? A monthly fee. I'm gonna pay it each month because my initial membership fee right there. This is my constant because the initial membership fee is a one-time charge. This is my coefficient. So I have five dollars for each month plus thirty-five to join it. She has a budget of two hundred dollars. Okay, so I'm going to find out what the, um, the most amount of CDs I can get is. Because domain, they're talking about the X, which is the amount of music. Well, first off, it cannot be one of these two because these mean that it's continuous. This means that continuous. This means that I could have 0.33 or 0.99999 of a, of a song or of uh, each song. So these are not going to be answer choices. So I have these two choices right here. So if I go through and I subtract 35 from each side, so then I get 5x equals 65, divide by 5, I'm going to get x equals 13. Well... Now I'm confused because that sure is not what it's saying up here. It says it can go up to 33. Am I not doing something right? She has a budget of $200. And the number of months that she can use it would have to be 13 months. At, oh, no, it's not. What? I'm so cuckoo crazy. Are you thinking I'm crazy? I am. Let's try a 1 right there. All right. So now I have 3, 3. There's the 33. It goes up to 33. All right. Finally getting my head on straight here. Here's the next one. Let's see what's down here. Nothing? Okay. All right. Mark is adding to his original garden in his backyard. The dotted part of the drawing represents the new part he would like to add. 
write an equation to represent the total area of Mark's new garden, including the original part. Okay, first they want the equation of the area. Remember that area is length times width. Well, it doesn't matter which one you choose to be length and width. I'll go with this being length and this being width. So first off, my area equals length is 55 times what is my width? Well, this part is 40 plus the dotted part, which is 2x. So I have 40 plus 2x. There's my equation. Now it's saying that if they give us the total area, so 55 times 40 plus 2x is going to equal 5060. Well, we can solve this. We just got to go through right here and do the distributive property. Multiply these two right here. So let's see here. I've got 55 times 40. Oh, where'd my, there we go. And I'm going to press enter. That gives me 2200. Oh, golly. Let's move here. So 2200 plus. 55 times, oh, not 2 times, times 2 equals 110x, and that equals 5,060. So let's subtract off 2,200, and I get 110x equals... Let's see, let's go with 5060 zero, zero, minus 2200, press enter, gives me 2860. So now we are going to divide by 110. And I get x equals, so let's go here and I'm going to press divide, 110, press enter, and that is 26. Now, it says what is the value of x, so that's what the value of x is, x is 26. Alright, here's the next ones, we've got a few problems to solve. Let's start with these four, pause the video, and then come back and see how you do. I'm going to draw my line right here. First thing I need to do is the distributive property. So I get negative 35, negative 5 times negative 8 is positive 40n equals negative 315. I am going to add 35 to each side. And I get 40n equals, so let's bring this up over here. I've got negative 315 plus 35. Press enter. It's negative 280. And now I'm going to divide by 40. And I get... So here we go up here, and I'm going to press divide by 40, enter. I get n equals negative 7. Remember to check your answers. You're going to put the left-hand side into y1, right-hand side into y2, press second graph, and if you're right, y1 and y2 will be the same. So I'll have, in this case, I'll have negative 7, negative 315, negative 315. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, the first mistake people do is they put these two together right here, and you can't. 6a has to stay separate. Then you can do the distributive property. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 8a is 40a. And it equals 143. So now my A's go together. And I get 46A plus 5. And it equals 143. 
I'm going to subtract 5 from each side. I get 46A equals 138. So let me go in here and I've got 138. Oh, I guess I didn't already do it, but I'll write it in there in a minute. Divided by 46. Press enter. And I get 3. So I'm going to divide by 46. A equals 3. All right, let's go on down here. If you don't have the other ones, go. you can pause the video and do those or just wait until before I do them. Here we go again. I'm going to do the distributive property right here. And I get negative 56N plus negative 8 times negative 6. You should have gotten 48. And that equals 216. I'm going to subtract 48 from each side. So I get 216 minus 48 and press enter. Okay, so I get 168 over here. Oops, I'm writing in the wrong color. I don't want to write that. Get 168. So I'll have negative 56n equals 168. I'm going to divide by negative 56. So let's see here. I'm going to write divide negative 56 and press enter. I get negative 3. So n equals negative 3. The next one. First step, do the distributive property. I get negative 12. 6 times 3 is 18m plus 2m. you got to just bring this down. Equals negative 1 12. So you want to put these two things together. I get negative 12 plus 20m equals negative 112. I am going to add 12 to each side. I get 20m and that equals negative 100. I'm going to divide by 20. And m equals negative 5. Okay, we have two more. I have, draw my line here. You forget about what's on the right-hand side. Come over here. You put these two together. I get negative 4n minus 10 equals 18. I'm going to add 10 to each side. I get negative 4n equals 28. Divide by negative 4, and n equals negative 7. The next one, I'm going to put these b's together. Now this is a negative 1b, so negative 1 and negative 4, I get negative 5b equals 15. Divide by negative 5. B equals negative 3. 